Hello beaters, it's me Mandy with Bead Woven Dreams here this evening with a Rivoli set in herringbone. So this is a herringbone setting, um, bezel setting um, that you can um, create around Rivoli or probably even cabochons. I haven't tried it with a cabochon yet. I just um, came into this uh, yesterday. I was kind of curious. This was just, you know, a question out of curiosity. I know there's um, peyote um, bezel, which I've done many times before. I know there's right angle weave bezel, which I have not tried yet. Um, but I was curious about herringbone bezel, and I looked online. I couldn't really find much of anything um, that was close to my idea or even a tutorial or picture or anything. And so I went ahead and went for it. And Put it together and it came out really well for the first try i'm really surprised um surprised because you know most of my really nice projects and things i come into are usually by accident and i don't plan them <laughs> so this is one thing i actually planned and you know i was curious about it planned it and it came together really well i like it because it's different from peyote in the sense that uh the beads are next to each other sitting next to each other as you can see there's no staggering. And what I mean by that, here's a example of a peyote um, setting um, around a cabochon. I started this back in March and it's a UFO, unfinished object. <laughs> um, but you can see how the beads stagger, which is the, you know, the nature of peyote and with herringbone they're all right next to each other. So I really like that. The other reason I was curious to um, see if I can do a herringbone setting is because there's a um, project I'm working on um, with all herringbone and I, you know, wanted to have a good um, foundation of herringbone around the Rivoli. Um, so that's why I implemented herringbone setting. If you're curious about it, something here, this is just something I'm kind of, you know, working on as I go. I don't know what it's going to turn into. I'm not even sure if this is going to be, you know, work together. They might even be two separate pieces. I'm not sure. This is all herringbone too, but I wanted, you know, a good herringbone um, foundation if I wanted to attach this to. So the entire piece would be all herringbone. Like I said, I don't know if this will, you know, be with it or not. You know, it might be something different. I'm not sure, but you know, we'll see. So I'll go ahead and move this out of the way. And I will go ahead and bring the Rivoli right here, the bezel. This is just a Chinese crystal Rivoli. I think it's Chinese crystal. It could even just be glass. I'm not sure. I think it's Chinese crystal. Um, only a dollar thirty-five. It's an eighteen millimeter um, Rivoli. It's just good for practice. This is also a Chinese Rivoli too. So this is just good for practice, which is why I purchased it before I graduated up to Swarovski, with an idea that I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and we'll get started. Now I'm not going to mention a number of beads. I'm not going to you know tell you that you're going to need this many beads for um, you know if you're working with 18 millimeter or 20 millimeter or 14 millimeter Rivoli that you're going to need X amount of beads. I'm not going to do that because in this technique it's really not needed and I'll there's a couple of reasons um, for that. First of all it's adjustable. Um, you know in peyote you have to string on a certain number of beads make that ring and then be you know build on the peyote and then you know um, fold it in uh, with smaller beads around the bezel or um, the rivoli and if it's too big or too small you have to undo the in, you know the entire peyote um, setting the ring everything and start from square one you don't have to do that with this piece actually which makes it really easy and the other reason is and some seed beads happen to be taller than other beads. Um, let me see if I can maybe give you an example of what I'm talking about. Mm, I've got two 11 O's here and I'm trying to find... No, that's not a good example. I'm trying to find 
two seed beads of the same color to show you an example. Okay, and this might work. So I have here, this is the permanent finish um, platinum gold I'm working with. And well, these two are too close in size, but I can tell that this one is not as tall as this one. Same width, because they're both 11 O's, but this one isn't as tall as this one. And I wish I could find a smaller one um, to give an example. Maybe this will do. Oh. This is a good example right here. Both 11 O's, same color, but this one is taller than this bead right here. So that'll actually, um, you know, um, have a good um, bearing on your number count of beads, depending on if you use this one or this one. You'll use less beads with the taller bead, less beads with the, you know, a little shorter bead here. So, but either or, it's not going to matter, you know, number count. It's basically just how many beads you'll need to go, you know, in there or herringbone to go around the Rivoli. So I've got a little bit of a thread here. Um, I think for this, a yard and a half um, will do for an 18 uh, millimeter, maybe two yards. But I've just got a little bit of thread here just to show you um, a few steps and then we'll kind of go along. I'm kind of going to do a speed. So I've got two, um, two 11 O's right here, picked up two. And then I'm gonna bring them down on my thread a little bit, like so. And I'm gonna stitch back through the first bead, making a loop. I've made a loop. I'm going to move the Rivoli out of the way. It's kind of distracting me. <laughs> Sorry. So I've made a loop and these two beads are sitting next to each other side by side. And for the first row, I like to go through it again. Go through that um, loop again. Kind of reinforce it a little bit. Because as you start adding um, beads, more floors on top of the first floor, um, it gets this, I don't know, the first floor just likes to get a little loose. So that's reinforced. Pick up two beads. Coming out of the first bead. Going down to the second bead. Like so, and then stitching back up. Like so. So basically, we're making kind of um, a two bead wide flat herringbone, and we're just always stitching when we add on two beads, we're always reinforcing with that row that we're um, leaving with the preceding row. Pick up two beads, stitch over. Leave that bead, stitch across. Like so. So it's just basically herringbone. Do it one more time, picking up two beads. Stitching across. Leaving that first bead. And then back over. And up again. Very easy. Very simple. And so we will continue to do this until we reach our desired length right here. Um, so I'm not quite sure how many beads um, this is. I believe this was 36. I counted this was 36, but like I said, the, the number of beads don't really matter because, again, it's going to depend on um, the height of the bead and the size of the revolver that you're working with. Um, now, there is going to be a little, um, 
a little cheat that you know you might want to employ of course taking us all back to high school or well is it high school or no sorry middle school and maybe even it's elementary it's been a minute sorry taking us back to pi <laughs> so we want to find out the diameter so this is 18 millimeter um 18 millimeter diameter find out the circumference is just that times pi so it came to about 56 um 56 millimeters however due to the width of the beads i had to add a little a few more beads so it came out to about 62 uh, millimeters but you kind of want to go somewhere around there um, as far as length if you want to do it that way <laughs> so i think this is definitely enough to go all the way around a rivoli. So what we do now and we're coming out of the bead here as if we're going to add two more beads and this should be pretty loose and it is okay. So now because I'm going to close this ring I like to just make sure that these two beads are certainly in place, this top floor. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch again down two beads, down this bead and this bead right here. Then I like to stitch across. And come up. Like so. Making sure it's nice and secure, it's nice and tight, it's not going anywhere. Alright. Now we're going to fold basically just by, you know, making a little loop, bringing one each end to meet. And we'll just stitch through one bead. Exit, like so, stitch across, and go up, get my needle in there, there we go, through one bead, and you saw how we pulled that, they came together, and we're going to meet these two beads here, stitch like so, and we're really just going to do that once. We're not going to reinforce just yet, and this way is to make sure that our rivoli is going to sit in there nice and comfortably. And it looked like it will. Yep. Sit in there perfectly. Not too big, not too small, just right. But if you find that it's too big or too small, um, because we did not reinforce this gap right here, the connection between both ends, we can easily just, you know, pull it out, you know, um, take our needle, stitch it out, and add or subtract how many beads. So we're just going to reinforce this ring right here. Remember, this is the gap right here. See? That's the gap. So we're just going back and forth between these two beads on this side and two beads on this side. Two beads on this side, two beads on that side. So we can reinforce it and make sure that we're happy. And I'll just come through a couple of times.
trying to get my needle. Sometimes the coating, the Dura coat or permanent finish makes the um, makes it a little difficult for your needle to get through those beads, especially if they're really tight. Get through like you know, mine are, but that's okay. It's worth it. Now we're putting a Rivoli in there, and you can see. That's about the right fit. It's nice and snug. There we go. It's nice and snug. Now we're not done yet. The next step we're going to do is we're going to stitch 15 O's on this side of the ring and 15 O's on this side of the ring, and then we'll put our Rivoli in. So right now it's just good to make sure that we've got um, the right amount of beads. It's our little strip of herringbone was just long enough, and it is. And we've secured our ring. We don't have to secure anymore, we're good. So now what we do Move our little tail out of the way. So we are coming, our thread is coming down out of this bead right here. We pick up a 15 0. We're going to stitch back through this bead right here, but through the top. We're coming down through the bottom, pick up a 15 0, stitch through the top. And what has just happened is that just like we did before, when we added our first, when we picked up our first two beads and the two 11 O's were sitting next to each other, that's pretty much what happened here. Is now we have a 15 sitting right next, 15 O sitting right next to this 11 O. So now we're going to go up, sorry, stitch down. <laughs> so the next 11 O, next to that, pick up a 15 O. And you can whip through this by re-entering the 11 0 that you exited, coming down to the bottom, going in through the top, and then also entering and exiting the next 11 0 like so. See, do that one more time. We're coming out at the bottom, this 11 right over right here, come to the top and stitch through this and the next 11 0. And so what we're going to do is that we're going to go all the way around. Make a ring all the way around. And then we're going to do the other side. Alright, so I went ahead and added 15 O's next to each bead, each 11 O, on the side of the ring. So you see now we just had two beads and now we have three beads all next to each other. You're going to notice that there's a little bit of a gap between each, let me see if I can show, yeah, between each of the 15 O's. See right in between there? Look like zipper teeth. <laughs> so there's a little bit of a gap and that's fine. It's actually essential because we're going to stitch through all of those 11 O's and we're going to close the gap. So it's going to, um, the 15 O's are actually kind of, kind of make, make a ring kind of fold in a little. Uh, I'll show you. There's, I just have to show it to you. It's kind of hard to explain. <laughs> all right. So I've added my last 15 0 right here. And I didn't stitch through, you know how I stitched through the next, the, that 15 0 on the next one? I just exited that one right there. 
like so. And now I'm going to stitch back through the 15 0 and all of the 15 0s. So stitching through this 15 0 right here. And then I'm going to stitch all the way around through all the 15 0s. Pull that tight, make sure that little 15 0 isn't going anywhere. Just run my needle basically just closing the gaps I'm just bringing them closer together Now my tail is right here, so that's helpful, so that way I know that's where I started. But also, as you can see, I'm pulling a little tight. You can see these beads right here are starting to kind of fold in a little bit. So that's you know, where you know you started. It's kind of the same idea when we were making a peyote um, bezel that we start off with 11 O's or either in CBs or Delicas and that last row we've um, we um, stitch with 11 O's to make it smaller and kind of you know make the peyote kind of buckle in a little bit it's the same principle same idea so you move my tail out of the way this is the first bead here that we stitch through to create this, um, to stitch through the ring. This is the last we were coming out of, so we're going to stitch back. So you can see as I'm pulling, they're kind of folding in a little bit. So I'm going to stitch through again. Go through all the beads for a second time. Because the first time doesn't really get it. I don't know why it doesn't really. It's never really enough. <laughs> it's not enough for the beads. And you can see that I'm coming through the second time. They're actually folding in much better. And I'm sorry, I should have mentioned um, what the thread I'm using. It's four pound Fireline, um, which I think is just enough for this project. You probably could do six pound Fireline, but we are going through 15 O's. And I think if you're going to um, use six pound, you might want to use a size 12 needle. I'm using a size 10 needle. And I really need to migrate to using size 12 on all of my projects, but I like the, the feel of a size 10. I'm a little spoiled. <laughs> so I'm just stuck with my size 10. But if you're going to use 6 pound, I suggest using a size 12 needle. And we're almost to the beginning. And we're getting close to our tail. Now that I've reinforced, you can see all of the beads just naturally fall in. It's going to be a little wonky like this. Um, that's fine. Once you put your Rivoli in, it rounds out, so it's okay. Yeah, it rounds out. 
So what we're going to do is I'm going to add 15 O's on this side of the ring, stitch through, stitch through again. Um, but I, well, actually what I'll do is I'll add uh, 15 O's and I won't stitch through just yet. I'll put the Rivoli in and then I will stitch through and I stitch through again and that way it'll fall over in the Rivoli and secure it. So basically we have the backing here on this side and then we'll have the 15 O's on this side so it's secure on both ends. So let me go ahead, I'll add um, 15's on this side. Alrighty, so I'm almost done now with adding 15's to the other side of our ring. Just have a few more to go. Oops. Dropping my work here. Let's see. I think I have like four more to go. And I'm going in the opposite direction this time because you know how I was coming down and then going up. Let's see. It was more kind of going like in this direction, now I'm going in this direction, which is fine, either direction works okay. Come on. And you can see here, my little ring is all <laughs> distorted and all different funny shapes here. That's quite okay. The Rivoli will round it out. Got one more bead to add. This is our last 15 now, right here. And you see, I'm just coming through one bead alone, 111 now. That's all. Just that one. Excuse me, sorry, I haven't actually. Um, Kind of battling with a cold here or some kind of flu or something since June so six months so sorry if I sniffle or um, my throat sounds a little clogged it's been an ongoing battle and my needle just popped off my thread so I'm gonna thread it back on I usually do only one knot around my needle so that way if I need to take it off quickly, I can. All right, so I'm coming out of the 11 because I just added the 15. So now I'm going to go just back through that 15 out, this one right here. And see the direction my needle was going in, this direction. So that's I'll continue in that direction, stitching through all the 15 O's. Okay. I like how they look like um, little spokes before you stitch them in. I wonder if I can do something with that. I don't know. It's just something looks kind of neat, kind of funky. <laughs> kind of like it. Trying to go through as many 15 hours as possible. And I'm not pulling too tight because I don't want to tighten it up just yet. But I do want to go through this first pass. So I've just got those few beads left. As you can see here, I was tightening just a little. The beads did fall in, kind of folded in naturally. Got that last little spoke, just last little bead looking like a spoke sticking out there. 
but that's how you come up with your own designs and you come up with you know own little things to discover you just notice those little things and you kind of follow up on it and you're like voila all right so now open it up a little bit pop a rivoli in like so and then we pull oops situated here pull and as you can see it's been set on both sides and with that rivoli in our setting it naturally rounded out naturally rounded out of course I will stitch through all the 15 O's a second time to give it extra security but once you do that you're golden you're done and your rivoli is set and it's not going anywhere once you do that second pass well even on the first pass here it's a little loose because it's on the first pass but you can see as I'm holding tight the rivoli is nice and secure on both sides so it's definitely not going to go anywhere so you definitely want to do two passes through the 15s on both sides so that way it's not too loose because you can see I can pull it but once I do the second pass and tie it off then we're good and so there you go that is how you set rivoli in herringbone and I really like it I really do um, I don't know what my uh, next project is going to be um, the little um, I think it's gonna be a pendant I'll bring it again this little guy right here I don't know what's gonna be I'm gonna do another petal on this side maybe a petal in the middle it might be something different I might do something different with this I'm not totally sure but I do like um, the fact that you know there's another way to you know set a rivoli or like I said even a cabochon and um, it's really easy it's adjustable so you don't have to do you know the entire um, base apart like you would do with peyote you would just do that first ring of herringbone if it's too big take away you know a few floors or if it's you know too small just add a few floors or how many floors you need and then go ahead and close off that ring add 15 L's on both sides of your herringbone ring and then you know stitch through them to secure them and you're good to go you're golden you're good and another thing I like about um, this uh, herringbone is that it's easy to stitch your uh, much easier in my opinion to attach things to it as you can see I can put my needle right through there really easily you can also do the same thing with peyote too it's just because the beads are so well, that didn't prove my point. <laughs> Let me try 11 0. Um, yeah, right here. The beads are really close next to each other and staggering. A lot of times you'll have that, you know, you can't really pick up the beads too much. It's a little, it's a little bit of a challenge. I just find, I mean, you can do it. You can attach um, things to a peyote bezel. Obviously, I mean, you can see the petals around, you know, the setting here. So it can't be done. But I find with herringbone, it's a lot easier. So go ahead, you know, give this a try. Uh, let me know how you like it. Um, you can send me your samples or whatever projects you're working on. And, um, you know, have fun. Make earrings, make uh, pendants, maybe even um, a bracelet. And uh, there you go. If you have any questions or um, any suggestions to give me or, you know, need help with it, feel free to let me know. And I will talk to you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye.